Hey guys, this is Kevin for Pixavert, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the Intel versus AMD CPU performance. I'm going to be making some recommendations. Uh, you'll have some links in the description. Now we're over at the Geekbench browser for the uh, single core performance. You can see this is dominated by Intel. However, you need to bear in mind that the Intel chips are going to be getting a major update later on in the coming month and that major update could significantly impact the performance both for the single core and the multi-core uh, performance. Intel dominates but will they dominate after the update because the update is trying to fix a major issue with the voltages. Some CPUs affected with elevated voltages and they're going to be sending out a fix for all CPUs that's going to be landing in the next month or so. So for this video, main recommendations are actually going to be for the 12th gen and also for AMD. Now, if we take a look at the most powerful AMD chip right at the moment, 7950X, we've got a strong single core performance uh, and a pretty, pretty strong multi core performance as well. So the AMD Raphael chips, <laughs> these chips have got very, very strong performance across the board in single core. So you can see 2715 to 2941. The 7600, the lowly 7600, and the very high 7950X. That difference there is not even 10%, really, is it? So I would say you're getting real good value on a single threaded performance basis. When we go to the multi threaded performance, the 7600, 12166, the 7600X, significantly higher, 12846. You could go for either of these two for a good value. Uh, CPU. Uh, I don't know. It's not even double uh, at, right at the top here, the 7950X3D. Now, there are some reasons why you want to go for the X3D chips. They are much, much better at gaming than the other chips in the list. They are much better than the Intel chips for gaming. And we've got insane energy efficiency with the X3D chips. They're much better, much, much more energy efficient than the equivalent uh, non X3D chips. When we take a look at the best selling CPUs, you can see a theme here. This is the US Amazon site and people are going for AMD. And this is probably partly due to concerns over Intel's stability, the stability of the Intel chips. The 78X3D chip is a good gaming chip. It comes in with eight cores and you could go for this for gaming or you could go this for, for, for this if you're a content creator. There are here quite a lot of 5600 CPUs. In fact, they're the most popular ones outside of the top two. So people looking for bargains, looking for value, they're going for the uh, 56 for the 5600X and the less powerful uh, chips in that 5000 series. The 5900X is a really powerful chip and the price is very affordable right now. Yeah, if you want to absolutely get the minimal cost, you can go for the 5000 series. They even have an X3D chip, the 5700X3D chip for the 5000 series. And the most powerful one, the 7950X3D is currently just $561. I think it was about $800 or something when it came out. So it's quite a significant drop in price. The 7700X is the one that you want to go for if you want a high performance, but not extremely expensive. A chip. The price of this has actually gone up a little bit since Amazon Prime Day. The 7600X has very good performance and $199. It is very affordable. So this is probably the top recommendation if you want a high and if you want a strong performance chip, but you don't want to spend uh, a lot of money. We go back and look at the 7700X. The eight cores there, you can use those in software like Photoshop, Premiere Pro. So you can definitely get extra use out of that. But the price at the moment is a bit high for the 7700X. We take a look at the 7900X 3D. This is $419. Pretty decent if you want a good gaming CPU, if you want something that is going to be used in gaming and office work or gaming and content creation. So with this one, you're getting a very high quality chip. It's been tried and tested over the last year and a half and uh, it's come through with a very high user rating. Now, if we take a look at the Intel chips, you can see there are problems. We've got a lower uh, user rating 
a lot of ratings and if we click here there is this there's a really fascinating summary that you can get now it's an AI summary and we can see immediately 8% of users are not happy they're giving it a one star and the issue is quality so that's the thing that's the problem there is a quality issue and it's not evident at first and then some people are seeing crashes and crashes and it gets worse over time. It's very rare for Intel to have this kind of really nasty issue going on with their high-end chips. It's affecting the high-end 13,000 and 14,000 chips, but you can still get a, a decent Intel chip. Uh, we'll take a look at a couple later on. Now, as far as laptops are concerned, this is the laptop uh, multi-threaded performance. You can see AMD at the top, Intel coming up there. I would probably be inclined to go with AMD because they are the most powerful they're also energy efficient as well. And although Intel are very clear that there is no problems with the 13th and the 14,000 chips for their laptops, I don't know, <laughs> I still have some doubts. So I will probably be sticking with AMD for just sheer power. Some of their chips are almost as powerful in the laptop as they are in the desktop. Uh, and if, for battery and energy efficiency, Apple is still top. Now, I've been recommending the Intel 12,000 series for several years now, I think since they came out. Um, they are very well regarded and there are no, none of the problems that we're seeing with the 13th and the 14,000 chips. So at 299, the 12900K, if you want a high-end uh, chip from, from Intel, this one is a good one. Now, the 13th and the 14th uh, generation those ones will be a slot in upgrade. So you can take this and just put in the upgrades for the 14th and the 13th gen, but I'll wait until the fix is in. And you know, we've seen what the results are in terms of performance. And we also see decent prices. Here we're seeing decent prices for the 12900K, but I gotta say the 14900, 13900, the prices are still a little bit high. Another chip which is very good value at the moment is the Core i9-12900KS. This one is awesome and it's the fastest of the 12th gen chips coming in right now at $299.99 uh, and uh, yeah, that, that's pretty decent. I know the feedback is a little bit low but that's to do with more the sellers so make sure you choose the right seller. Otherwise if you're looking for Intel chips the 12th generation chips are actually pretty decent value and if you're looking to get into Intel if you prefer Intel the 12th gen chips right now most of them are actually selling at very decent prices it's just that question of upgrading to the 13th and the 14th gen that is a drop-in upgrade really convenient but again we need to see evidence of quality with those chips from Intel and fingers crossed the upgrade will produce that. Now there were issues last year with bugs, the inception bug from AMD. I did a video on that, that's now in the YouTube membership for, for this channel. That bug affected every single modern chip from AMD, every single one. And it caused a significant reduction in performance on some CPUs. And when I tested the fix, the microcode fix, it did produce instability. I think the problems with the Intel chips are actually significantly worse. Now AMD are coming out with new chips. These new chips are gonna be the most powerful chips. They're coming out in August. And this is one set of results for the most powerful one. There's a lot to talk about with the new chips and that's gonna be a different video. But I would say, yeah, I mean, if you wanna be able to go on with the 7000 series you'll be able to upgrade to the 9000 series when that comes out uh, and that's going to be coming out within the next month 